Hello everyone. Welcome back to Kimo Vida Show. I'm your host Vicky Man. As we focus towards improving our food systems, our agricultural systems, we need to keep updated with the current trends and innovations in agri. That's why today we visited a farm in Jolo, Nakuru County, so that we can learn more about agroecology. Where we're studying, we're going to learn about aquaculture so that we know from hatching to mature fish what you need, the challenges, the diseases, and the way to earn top notch or to be the best fish farmer in Kenya. Join me as we explore this topic together and remember to hit the subscribe button. Hello and welcome back to Kilimo Faida. It's your host, Biki Man. I welcome you to this show of Kilimo Faida Show. We learn together. And where I am, I know you sing beautiful scenes. I'm not in America. I'm in Kenya, in Jolo Sub County. I'm hosted by my guest here, Bonomwangi. Yes. He's going to introduce himself. Karibu uh, sana, Kiman. My name is Robert Mwangi. Uh, we run the Be My Partner Farm, where we do circular innovations uh, based on agroecological principles. And today we are here, I believe, to learn about fish. So this is part of uh, of our system, uh, and it is uh, very key uh, in, in in our farm operations. Now, how do you integrate? fish in your system of farming? So fish, uh, for one, we use them as water reservoirs for our farm because uh, whenever you talk about fish, you have to have a pond or maybe uh, containers like this. So this is where we, once we harvest water either from the roofs, wherever we get the water, we keep, we keep it with fish as long as it's for purposes of, 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 of crop farming. So, secondly, the fish, they help us with the improving the water for the crops in terms of the waste that they put in here. So, there's a lot of nitrogen, phosphorus, and so many other elements that are key to our crops. So, once the fish are done with the water, whatever they call waste, waste water, is what we use to, to, to farm it. And so you can see it's it's the main it's like the main source of uh, fertilized water for for our crops. Awesome. Yeah. So wh which type of uh, which varieties of fish or which which fish species do you have? So we have two types. We have tilapia and uh, catfish. So catfish they they are somehow resilient. They are very good actually. We like keeping them more than more than tilapia because they can withstand uh, very low water levels, uh, very low oxygen levels. So there's that opportunity for having your water more fertilized, uh, and also they are easy to handle uh, compared to to tilapia because tilapia you need a lot of fresh water, and also you need uh, very high levels of, of oxygen. So, so very little changes in the water parameters, you might lose all your tilapia. But with catfish, you can, can do very well. So this dream of starting this aquaponic project, was it a realization of the additional benefits or is it a, a, commercial, a commercial venture? So uh, here for fish, we were doing, we do fingerling production. So we have a hatchery where we produce the, the fingerling. So Whatever you are seeing here, these are nurseries where we nurture the larvae into fingerlings. Uh, some of them we use them to stock our ponds, others we, we sell out. Although we've been also having challenges with the production, it has been a bit slow, experiencing a lot of mortality rates. But we appreciate that we are learning up, we are catching up, and very soon we'll be very big producers of quality fingerling. Now, uh, I believe this area, we, we, we've known uh, fish to be produced mostly in Nyanza region, where we have the, the freshwater lakes. Mm -hmm. But now we are in inland. How would you let the experience, and is it something that you're getting very positive to do? 
would you recommend to other farmers? Yes, uh, especially in inland, uh, you would do it as a as an integration to your farm, because if you were to do commercial fish production inland uh, as a standalone, it is very expensive. You need uh, a lot of water, so that might be might become very challenging, especially for the small scale farmers, actually who are the most important. But uh, if you are close to a water source, you have the capital to do that. You have the land, you can you can do it. Now, with me, I'm holding this green weed. Mm. What's this, and why are you? Why do you have it on this on this hatchery? So, first of all, this is not a weed. <laughs> it's a very important plant. So, it's called azola. Oh. It's an algae. So, it has very many benefits in our farm, uh, live alone in fish. So, with fish production, it is a source of feed for them. Okay. It is a very, it has very good uh, protein, very quality plant protein, uh, very high quality vitamins for your fish, and uh, you cannot integrate it with tilapia. This is the favorite feed for, 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 for tilapia. Uh, secondly, it works symbiotically with the fish by uh, creating a better environment because they absorb the nitrogen and the ammonia from the water and at least you can prolong the, 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 the water you have to, to keep the to keep fish. So uh, number three, environmentally it multiplies very fast. It has very high rates of photosynthesis and they say Azola is four times better uh, in terms of carbon sequestration compared to a tree, a mature yeah. tree. Because the rates of photosynthesis are four times higher than, than that of a tree. So in creating the environment, oxygen feeds, you can also use it as feed for chicken, goats, cows. It has very many uses. So I, I believe one of the main challenges that I've been facing farmers in Kenya is that you, you have a very good enterprise, but the cost of feeds. Yeah. Since you, you're doing more of a... Uh, 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 what would we call it? A, a naturally, cyclic, mm -hmm. a, a cyclic system. Yeah. How do you manage your, your your cost of production in terms of cost of feeds for for this project? So one is diversity. So if if I was to do fish alone, and maybe minus the azola, you see, I would I would have to go back into my pocket to go and compensate for 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 those feeds somewhere else. But if you do your farm, you integrate your farm somehow with other technologies. Like for example, we get uh, plant protein from here and vitamins. We also get uh, animal protein from DSF. Okay. So even if I'll go buy feeds, fish feeds from the formulated feeds from uh, from the shops, maybe a bag that would uh, last me one month if I was to do fish alone. If I integrate it, it can go maybe for a month and a half or even two months. So by that way, I'm, 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 I'm reducing my, my, my cost and that's how we are able to manage uh, the, the profit margins. What, uh, since you started, how long, how long is this project? Like how old? So this is uh, from 2019, 2023, about four years. Four years. Yeah, so it's been a journey. What are some of the main challenges that you faced with the establishment of this project? Wow, number one in Lare, water. Water has been a very big challenge. Uh, both crops and fish. So water has been very key. So we've been taking advantage of the structures we've been building as we continue to maybe harvest the rainwater. And uh, number two, we've been looking for, we've made a connection with a local borehole that supplies us uh, with water. But over and above that, we are very keen on recycling of water, as I, as I told you. There is no, we don't use fresh water for farming directly. Be it uh, maybe watering crops or such like things. It must come through the fish. We get, we make some little money here and we get more benefits at the farm. So, how 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 open is this project for other people to learn? So we are very open. Actually, we are moving towards become as, becoming a center of excellence. 
uh, not only for the individual value chains that we have around but also for specific like for fish you can come here learn about fish diseases how to set up the different ways you can do fish farming uh, in terms of cost effectiveness and uh, the efficiency levels if you want to go uh, intensive there are ways you can do that if you want to do the normal just integrate it for maybe water purposes and domestic consumption of fish there is a lot of knowledge here so we are very open people we we always welcome them to come in the the, the issue of uh there's a new area for fish. Mm. Have you maybe faced ecological problems or maybe in terms of diseases and, and such kind of things? Actually, you've come at the right time because uh, like we started having fish diseases like three days ago. So we, it was kind of worrying because we've never had such in our farm. But now we see it as an opportunity for us to learn, gather that information, and maybe in the future share it with others and see the remedies. So we've had uh, a white spot disease, which is a bacterial infection in some of our fish, uh, especially the fingerlings. So we are moving, doing uh, antibacterial, uh, uh, doing them a water bath, and they're improving. So very soon, maybe when you come back, I'll. <laughs> I'll give you a very direct solution on how to deal with that. Now, in an era of uh, climate change, uh, first of all, uh, a farmer wants to, to establish a similar project. Mm -hmm. what, does, what does he or she require? So, uh, fish you, is a high investment uh, value chain, I would say. Because number one is water, because and clean water. because Water is primarily the environment within which fish grow. So it has to be in perfect condition. Number two, you need uh, the ponds. And setting up a pond, maybe the dam liners are very costly. Pond construction is not just digging a hole. There is a way, there is a technical way on how to do it. Uh, number three, you need the seed, quality fish seed, which is also kind of expensive. Uh, the feeds are also super expensive for, for, for fish. So you need to even come up with ways that you can reduce your, your, your cost of feeds. But if you start it as an integration, you can learn from that and going forward, you can go, you can go expanding in that. As you maybe, you need more water to do your crops. That means you'll need more fish. So, so with your pods, I have seen, you, you talked of flesh water, mm -hmm. but your pods, I saw the water is kind of green, and mm -hmm. then you have a covering on top of the pond. Yeah. What is the significance? So the green is, uh, is very deliberate, because uh, whatever we do is supplementing the feeds. So the green aspect provides the natural food for fish, in terms of planktons, algae, they grow. So the green is the algae, so actually it's fish food. So if they were to be in very clear water, they wouldn't really do well because there is no food for, for them. But there is a level that uh, there should be so that uh, the, the plants inside cannot deprive oxygen to levels that cannot tolerate fish survival. Then do you do you have a problem with predators? Yeah, the covering actually is cause of predators. One day I kept 3,000 fish and I harvested only 500. And they are very tricky. You see, they see you from above. <laughs> they are able to plant the ones you go, they are back there. And uh, by the way, I would really advise any farmer doing fish farming on open ponds or wants to do open ponds, is that you really have to have a, a covering. Because apart from you losing your fish, number two, those birds, they will damage the liners. the liners. Once they miss the fish, they'll perforate the dam liner. So again, you'll go back and now start reinvesting, uh, reinvesting in the and the dam liners are very costly. So how how is the how pro how uh how how profitable is the the aquaculture or the, the, the fish business that someone would invest a lot of money to, to establish? So if if you are to invest uh, the, the main challenge in terms of investing in fish is consistency. You see fish, uh, <coughs> fish
fish you have the, the the growth period is between six months to even nine ten months so if you only have one pond it does not make economic sense because once you go to the market and provide even quality fish next time you will have to wait another 10 months which is not does not make any sense so that's why you need many ponds at different levels that's how i was saying the, the investment has to be has to be a little bit higher. but the income is there the income is good ah advice yeah. fellow fish farmers or mm. those people who are thinking of the idea to start so if you are to start a fish farming uh, and maybe you don't have that very big investment right now do it as a as a combination with, uh, with your crop farming as you learn more once you're able to invest a lot you can do the recirculatory system where you can recycle your water to or even blow your water to add more oxygen so that you can have a little water with with, with many fish but start small learn about it and then move forward if you are in big scale i would advise you go if you have that investment and that power you can go for the recirculatory aquaculture which is a kind of an intensive intensive uh, fish farming system and uh, always remember consistency if it is your primary business at least at any point in time you should be able to supply fish so that you can be able to grow your market and also maintain your customer because if you don't have fish they'll go find somebody else and when your fish are ready marketing now you'll start again from zero yeah so thank you for a lot much and keep doing this amazing work yeah, yeah. and you you are really an inspiration to many people thank you so, so much. thank you and we'll keep in touch yeah. and more people are going to come here visit and learn so to our viewers thank you for staying glued until the end i believe that was a fun fun learning session it's possible agriculture is a living career that's why every day we have to keep learning new things remember to subscribe and share the link so that we can keep enlightening as many farmers as possible i was your host biki money until next time bye bye